Here's another amazing story from season two. I clean, I wash, I do all these things. That's not true. <laughs> real. She know, she know in at that, right? She'll help and she'll do it when it needs to be done. But I like doing those things. So I never thought of me, the, the term I, that I use sometimes is host husband, right? I never thought that that was going to be the reality. But when, I, when we realized that that was a reality, it, was, it wasn't even a thing like, aha. It was more like, oh, hey, you know, we've been doing this for some years now, and it works. But this is Forever I Do. A 12-year journey that's been such a riot. We have an extended version with Charles and Judith Hyatt. Um, we met at a place called Peace Corps. Uh, it is an international organization that carries volunteers all over the world to do 27 months of volunteerism. She worked at Peace Corps Jamaica. I worked at Peace Corps headquarters Washington. in Washington, D.C. And I was part of the architect team, team that, that created the network that they used. So we were updating the network. And um, I flew in some equipment servers and all these things. And um, they got stuck in customs. So I had to meet Judith because she was the admin officer that dealt with all procurement and things coming from overseas. When I walked into this office and I walked past this window and I saw a hairstyle about Big Sup, right? And that's no exaggeration. I'm going to stop dead in my tracks because I'm in love naturally here, right? And her um, subordinate is the IT manager for Jamaica. So I said to him, who is that? And he said, boss, forget it. Just forget it. Um, that's Judith. Just forget it. Too much man trying. Just forget it. Leave it alone. <laughs> and I said to him, I looked at him, looked at her, and I said, wow, we must meet her. And he said, well, it's in the same going. And all of a sudden, we start to get dry tongue and all uh, them type of something there. Anyway, you know, so I can't go out like that. <laughs> so I went in there and, um, in my most sophisticated um, American accent. I said, hey, look here. Um, I need to get some stuff out of customs. And, <laughs> and she says, aren't you Charles Hyatt? Are you Charles Hyatt Jr.? So why you sound so American? I immediately said, well, you don't know, say, you know. <laughs> leave. But anyway, um, that's when we met. That was in 2005. Mm -hmm. When I saw him walking into the office, um, <clears throat> Charles walks with charm. He walks with confident charm. And so um, I heard him before I saw him. So I heard all of the bustle and the hustle and he's at the top of his voice and greeting everybody. He's like, Charles is here. The man has arrived. So I was determined that I was going to ignore him. So I'm sitting in my office and then the presence started to walk past my office door. And I'm looking through the window and I saw when he looked in and passed and went and talked to whoever and then I see him come back and kind of milling around my space and everything. So then eventually he presented himself. And with it done, make up my mind already. So you know what? Him thinks that he needs to catch me a winner. So I'm gonna make sure I say I do every single thing to make him know say 
in uh, Mio inside here. So, <laughs> so I was very stiff with him when he walked into my office. Uh, while while he was in Jamaica, he spent about what two weeks, fourteen days, about fourteen, 14 days, days in Jamaica, yeah. and we had to work very very closely together because of what he was doing and my responsibility. And so we spent a lot of time talking about the nature of the work that he came to do. Um, and I realized that, all right, as when he dropped all of the, what I felt was the important self, I started to find that, all right, he was, he was okay, but I wasn't attracted to him at the time. And so we spent a lot of time talking while he was there. And um, as it came around to him leaving, but it kind of started to feel a little lightness still, you know, you know? And as it came around to him leaving, about to leave, it was maybe about two or three days before he was supposed to, le to leave. He came very casually into my office because now we're having a very nice relationship. And he said, um, how would you like to go and have dinner with me this evening? And my heart fluttered because um, I did not expect that you know i didn't expect it and so i kind of hesitated a bit and then um i kind of gathered myself and did i say yes on the spot so what had happened was <laughs> <laughs> um the whole meow thing was still going on inside me you see and so I thought, well, I am going to knock this lady off her feet. Her rockers will be knocked today. In my preemie. No, listen, listen, listen. No pre <laughs> na Yeah, pre right? me all this time. Because guess what? She's a down-to-earth woman. <laughs> and I just when we said she take care of me, she take care of me. I mean, there was nothing that the team needed that Judith didn't preempt. And just the way that the, the, the thing that got me about Judith was the way that everybody was reacting to Judith and how Judith was taking care of everybody, making sure that everybody was just good. And so, we start going with them vibe. So I decided, no man, this young lady, she kind of special, right? So I went to her and I said, um, have you ever been to Strawberry Hill? <laughs> and she, God, you know, I said, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely not. She has never been there. And if she's ever been there, she's never been there with me, right? <laughs> and she looked and she says, oh, yeah, I have. I said, well, I believe you should go to dinner with me <laughs> at Strawberry Hill. And she did one of those numbers, right? <laughs> and I said, mm -hmm. you get catch. <laughs> and I laugh like this when I get nervous too. <laughs> so... So I said, I will pick you up at whatever time it was. I said, I'll pick you up um, and we'll go. Now, me walk out of the office com com just completely confident. There was one thing. I didn't have a ride. I didn't have access to a ride. So the whole idea of me picking her up. Out the window. Out the window. But <laughs> I couldn't admit that, you see, because... I have just set the bond moment and now it has to... Right, good. So I talked to about five different dudes to see if I could borrow their cars and they all said no. They're not happening. And then I went back into her office, confident. <laughs> By the way. You're going to have to drive. You're driving. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, oh really? I said, absolutely. You know the way? I had never been to struggle. <laughs> it was neither here nor there to me. I mean, I'm really cool like that. She, so it she, did really. It was neither here nor there. She just took it with stride. That was fine. What happened before Strawberry Hills is, I remember I tell you afterwards, say, uh, I never have nothing for wear. No, I remember that. Because I wasn't the goat, the goat in type. All right. No, she, no, she definitely was not. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I wish we could have shown you some pictures of some outfits from back there. But may I tell you? So, what I had? Satin dress and center. Had... <laughs> anyway, continue. I had, I, had, I had church clothes and I had work clothes. 
Mm-hmm. And That's I had it. clothes that you wear goat on a Saturday. <laughs> we never had no proper, proper goat in clothes. So I went into a panic. And I had to leave work the very day because it was where we were going out when, like the following the day. Friday, or we the Friday, we were going out yeah, we next. I had to leave work, man, and go shop. I have to go find something for the shop. And it's funny, you know. The clothes I'm buying, you didn't say you like it. And then years later, what do you expect me to you say? Talk about it. <laughs> I'm mean, chat you like crazy, but <laughs> <I'm laughs> you look frumpy, you see. But you know, it's in the moment. I can't say, boy, you look frumpy to the door. I'm not going to say that. Oh, you look so beautiful. Let, let me get your door for you. By the whole time, I scanned the dress and I said, there has to be something more about this dress. <laughs> so we got my every dress thinks I'm look cute. <laughs> we went and had a wonderful dinner. The first date turned into the first day. Yes. Because we got to Strawberry Hill at about 6.30 p.m. And we left Strawberry Hill at yeah. about 8.30 in the morning. In the morning. We stayed right? up. And we night. never checked in. We, we just sat down and we, we chat. The whole, we had dinner. We had yeah. lamb or something whatever like that. It whatever it was. Yeah, and um, I said, well, we finished eating now, but I don't feel like go home yet. Because yeah. me, let me tell you, say, the, wait, the waiting staff, did I come around our table with Anna Dead with Laugh with the foolishness that yes. we were going on with? Yes. So I really felt comfortable because she had eaten at me a fool and it was it was just perfect. And we said, well, let's go sit down by the pool. And we walked around the property for quite a while. Well, that's true. We did, we did. We walked around the property. Yeah. And funnily enough, they let us into a, a bed. That's so crazy. The, the staff, it's like they got pulled into all of the madness. And then opened up them sweet and let us into the room. And, and then left us for about 30 or 40 minutes in a them suite. And we were looking at each other because first date, you know, so we want to be a gentleman and we want to be this and we want to be that. And um, I'm saying, <laughs> I, I am not going to do <clears throat> what is expected right now. I'm not going to come on to her or nothing like that. And, but I said, I'm going to test the waters. <laughs> So I'm sure there's this strawberry hill is so interesting. That chair. They have, <laughs> <laughs> there is a chair. I don't know if it was in only in this suite, but there's a wooden chair yes. on the balcony yes. that yes. is reclined. Yes. And it has <laughs> stirrups. <laughs> it's like an delivery chair. It has footrests. Yes. <laughs> but what that all the <laughs> But seriously, no, no joke. And it's a perfect resting place for your feet. Wide it is, open. It, yes, yeah, it is. It's a perfect suite, and the furniture is perfect for sweetness. And as we laugh about the chair, we laugh about the chair, we laugh about the chair. And I, every time she got towards the chair, me pull her because not going out here, not going out here, not going out here. So anyway, um, after the lady came back, see, you know, I forgot about you guys here. You're having fun. She totally forgot and, about us. And the woman comes in and starts looking at the bed. And she looked at It was a setup, you know. Complete a setup. Complete setup. But, like I said, I'm a gentleman. And I'm not going to go there. I'm his proper girl too, so I wouldn't even allow that to happen. As we're going out, me hold her by the waist. And you know, the young lady turning towards me like she want a kiss. And I said, I absolutely <laughs> not. I'm going to go there because I am different. You understand? And it was at that point that fear mood changed to how oh, this man I do. Yeah, that was like a break in the that was a break in the relationship. Yes. I think, it was a we break. Like because it was building, 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 and I said, absolutely not. Yeah. After all. So we went and we started talking and no joke. We sat on the edge of the pool. Yeah, you know that the, the edge of the pool that almost infinity like pool. Yeah. But we instead of sitting over where the chairs are, we went and where the wood stops, we sat over that side looking over Kingston. Yeah. And daily I'm gonna know what she do to me. But eight hours later, we still are sitting there and watching the sunrise or come up. And really just talking. We, we found so many things to talk about. We chat about so much. We chat, we chat, we chat, we chat. Yeah. I am surprised my tongue never did a top of my mouth. Because the ho- we weren't drinking anything, you know. 
We had no drinks, we had no, nothing. We, we just we, we just chat. And the staff just left us. The Everybody left. locked up. The place was just empty and we were just there. Yeah. Yeah. And she went to work and I had to find myself to work. Mm -hmm. And um, I left, went to Peru. And while I was in, because I was in Peru for 14 days yeah. also. Yeah. While I was in Peru. We were on the phone. Eight hours, nine day. hours on the phone at night. So like we got home, I'm calling him, he's calling me. When I tell you we had a phone bill that was... $700 US. in 14 days in US dollars. Crazy. And that was on one side. Yeah, that was on her side. So, no, on, on my side. Yeah. And she had another bill that was comparable was to that. Because she would call and then I would say, okay, let me call you and... Yeah. It was madness. So yeah. anyway. It was good madness. But it was good, good madness. madness. I, I would call myself a communicator. Mm -hmm. um, I like talking. I like to be heard. And I like hearing people as well. Um, I don't like hearing all of the fluff. I like hearing all of the real things that people have to say. And so I found that it was very, very easy to, to talk about everything there were no boundaries i didn't feel like i had to hold back on saying xyz because there was perhaps judgment going on i found that i could talk to charles about every single thing as you as you, you know you, you say a little thing you realize that okay there was no judgment that it met upon here and so i felt like the door opened a little more so i could say a little more and i could say a little more and um Charles doesn't have any filters and it might be offensive to some people for me it was refreshing because I grew up in a very um, in a very strict restrained culture where we don't we don't say too much to people who are not one of us you know you're not really talking business or saying a public and um, Charles never grew up with, I don't know if he ever grew up with all of those filters, but he never had those kind of filters and I found it very refreshing. So for me, it was a natural pull to be able to finally feel like I was being free and I, I use the term with him a lot, being naked. I could actually be naked in a conversation with someone for the first time in my, in my life and I didn't feel like judgment just fell on top of me. So for me, that became very, very attractive. And that's what our conversations were about. It was just about us being very bare with who we are. Mm -hmm. I think it was this December of 2007, we decided that, okay, all right, let's stop the foolishness. Because if you are calling me at night time to say good night, and we are saying, no, you hang up, no, I'll hang up, no, you hang up, and all them foolishness, then real. obviously there's it something real. real happening there. <laughs> Um, I was still living in the States, but I had decided at that point that I'm moving home. And I was going to move home right after my grad school was over. Regardless of whether we were together or anything of that nature, I was moving home in 2008. And, um, and that was long, that decision was long before. Yeah, long before I met her. So and between, between all of those times when, when he went back home, um, I would come and visit you. Well, yeah, she had work. She had work in DC. Right. Yeah. So she she would come into conferences and stuff like that. And so it it the, the friendship built. It was building. Um, but like I say, it was 2007 when we decided. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is something real. Let's see what this whole boyfriend girlfriend thing looked like. And um, it was a good look. So in 2008, when I said, look, mm -hmm. um, before I'm coming to Jamaica, I have to go back to Zimbabwe, I have to go back to South, South Africa, and you have to come with me. And the, if the immediate answer was, sure. But then the reality of what that means set in for her, and she started asking, I mean, when I tell you a question like, I... <laughs> Yes. Miss uh, Delia, <laughs> they are more well, well do, what, what is the culture like? Um, are they Christians? Are they, I mean, all kinds of, because she had no idea about Africans, you know? 
and I've always been Afrocentric and so I was a little bit more knowledgeable about the continent than she was and I said that the only way that I can consider you part of me is if you become connected to Africa and so we went and we spent a month traveling um, five countries and it was amazing it's still our favorite time it together is, it is. Um, We've had children since, we've been married since, but that time in Africa, yes. barring none, was, was wonderful. Um, I mean, we stayed in hostels, we stayed with friends, we stayed with family, we, we all over the place. We went to um, safaris and yeah. I was attacked by a lion and... Um, um, lion cover. It was a lion. <laughs> it was a lion. Doesn't matter what the size is, it's still a lion. Anyway. Um, so as, as I was saying, you can edit out that part. I was, I was attacked by a lion and um, um, we were actually almost mauled. And this is a real oh, story. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yes, we were yes, almost mauled yes. by a pack of female yes. lions. It was about nine, eight or nine of them. A whole heap of them. Start coming at the car. At the same time. One start bite the tire. The other start pull off the, the, on the fender. The, on, the, on the the side mirror. The one go over by now the backs of the females Crazy. come to the middle of the Crazy. car window and one is biting off the side view mirror trying to get us to come out of the car or to do something with the car so me drop it now and me start vroom, vroom, and me start do all kind of thing one jump up on Onto the hood the hood and is doing and, this at and the in window. all of this this is when this man here is saying to me, film Judith, it. Film it. it I mean, film it, Judith, film it. 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 You You're getting it, Judith, film it. <laughs> Think about it. When else are you going to see that? You must understand the, the need of catching these things for documentation purposes. And and Camera she's there drop. as the, I am I'm handling basically I am the skip driver, right? And she is handling the camera. And so she was under the dashboard. <laughs> Beautiful Christian Jamaican girl, about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And in the midst of it, Charles is like, film the thing, film the thing. <laughs> because she had our camera, and I'm there in the driver's seat. You get it? You get it? <laughs> and she's, you get it? listen, man, her leg up upon the steering wheel, and she done a table, Lord God, never did. <laughs> Look on the video, you see me. I talk about oh, yeah, I do. And you see the steering wheel, you see the gear shift, and every now and then you see a little ear of a lion. <laughs> Couldn't do nothing with the video. <laughs> we drove off, I decided, let's do it again. again. <laughs> so we went back around, <laughs> <laughs> and that has been how we have, we have stayed together. That's been it. Let me tell you, she can't swim, right? We went snorkeling. Yeah. Right? Me not really deal with heights, and we did some jumping off at some this Rick's Cafe and all them things. It, it, we, we just do things that... <laughs> you proposed to me. I proposed That's to a, you. Right, good, wonderful. And it so, is okay so for the woman to propose to the man. It is absolutely okay. okay. I am going to be yours and you are going to be mine. We're going to belong to each other. It was a moment of when was that going to happen? No, we decided to listen. Um, I think all the all the knowing that we were going to be knowing up to the point where we need to make a decision had reached its fine point. And so we were going to be, we were off on a vacation in Florida where his mom lived at the time. And um, we're walking through the mall because the entire family were going to do a family photo for Christmas. So we're there in Florida, we're walking through the mall. We're nicely dressed up and everything, like oh, we're nicely dressed up now. And um, I said to him, "So, so we're not going to to do the thing. We're not going to do the thing. We're not going, you know, the married thing. We're not going to do it." And. Um, I know he was probably taken aback when yeah, I said I was, it. I was kind of. I was kind of taken aback. What? What? Huh? <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> married? What? Frankly, that's that. That was a proposal. It's like let's we we we're going to get married, 
And so he said, okay, oh yeah, definitely. We happened to be walking past a Zales jewelry store in the mall and he says, come. And we walked into the Zales jewelry store and he bought he bought the ring. So, so hear this now, and gentlemen, hopefully, wherever on a day, hopefully, you find yourself in this situation. So, we're going to the sales, and I said, let's do this. Um, which one you want? Daily. Every jewelry, jewelry store has the normal jewelry, and then they have the estate jewelry. The <laughs> estate jewelry is usually something left from those people who have trusts and those things you understand and so the rocks in those places are not the rocks that i would like to talk about right so i i kind of moved her over to the non-estate mm -hmm. just to see what was happening here and <laughs> she looked and she says i think i found my ring so when she said that i mentally took a picture of everything that she would have been looking at and everything looked extremely expensive so i start to sweat and she pointed and she said i want that ring and i quickly said miss come here come here miss come here because she picked out the smallest dust filled ring that it it couldn't even sparkle you understand it was the cheapest ring in the store, right? <laughs> and I said to the lady, wrap up that ring quick, <laughs> quick, quick, quick. And she was serious because I thought, I thought that she was testing me at that point. And she wanted a ring, it was $700. And I said, please wrap it up. So I said, so what, you're not gonna get me a ring? And she said, well, I'm supposed to get you a ring? So I actually bought my own ring for $219 <laughs> and we're still wearing them no <laughs> because she didn't you want to see it <laughs> <You didn't>, barely <laughs> there <laughs> she, she didn't want anything else and I didn't want anything else this is us sterling silver I don't sterling, know. sterling silver, silver. 925 mm -hmm. sterling I don't mm -hmm. even know what that is she does teach me yeah. them things are recently mm -hmm. and um that's it yeah we got married I have to say right because it would be unfair if I didn't say this is the second lady I'm married to, right? The first ring I got was $15,000. $15,000. That is in somebody's insurance place, platinum. right? And now that didn't have no use to me. And I had a platinum ring that was $1,800. I didn't buy that one, but I bought the... the so when this came up, let me tell you. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> So that, that's how that happened. That's how the proposal yeah. happened. So my favorite that part way. of the wedding <laughs> was her dress, right? Yes, yeah, yes, that yes, day at the wedding, yes. she looked like sun rays yes. herself. She was so beautiful that day. Um, and the thing I loved about her dress is that she purposely said, me no want a white dress. <laughs> After all, me and a virgin. So, she got an orange dress with some accents and... Yeah, it was, it was, it was an orange dress. It was an orange dress and it was, it was loud and orange, but I loved it. Yeah, man, it was, it was We wanted really a wedding cool. that was going to be filled with life. Lots of color, we wanted lots of laughing. That's one of the yeah. things that we talked about. Yeah. It had to be something that was alive. And the colors um, had to be alive. The people who were going to be there certainly had to be alive. We're talking about this wedding thing recently, you know, and yeah. we're, we're talking about our different roles in the wedding. Completely untraditional. It's so untraditional. Untraditional. I mean, Chance planned the, I mean, planned the, planned the wedding. wedding. I mean, planned the wedding. It's crazy. When I, just, I think about it, the only thing I was responsible for was my dress and my bridesmaid and dress. Can you imagine? And showing up. Can you imagine? He did the invitations, he did the program, the the menu you were yeah. in, the venue. Big up Carl Hart. He, uh, he Serious took care thing. of everything and I just, I just turned up and I turned up a little bit late. A little bit late, you know, 45 minutes late. Because I took late. And it was but raining. But it, I, I felt such a euphoric moment at that time. I stand out in the rain and wait for me late. You understand? Because 
nobody was going to touch her before me touch her, you know? So when the car pulled up, I was right there. And we and, and big up um, Buddy and Sissy Puyat. That is where we got married in their yeah, yard. Backyard. And um and Faye, Faye Ellington was the MC and Auntie Leonie, Leonie Falls was there and it, it just had a great Louis, Louis Marriott. It was it So was, you can imagine the, the, the vibe that we had. Um, Grace McGee and her husband were there. We just had a great time. There was a good family that was there. We and, danced. Um, and the thing about that wedding too is that um, we had a guest list and <laughs> everybody who we invited turned up. Yes. But then I don't know if you could call these people crashing the wedding. No, because they guess never what? crashed it. Un Uncle Buddy um, has every Saturday. A thing at his house, yes. right? Um, it stopped now, but if he had it since the fifties, yes. right? And our wedding was on a Saturday, so naturally the normal people turned up. The normal people sh showed up. Turn up. Yes, they and they saw a function happening, and so they, they came and they sat. And, like, and cheers were provided for them. You just the cheers passing over. Yeah. And them sit down. And and <laughs> they were good. Everybody was fed. We don't know how. Carl, Carl created magic. Oh, we had a full day. house. We had a full yeah, house. Yeah, man. And when I tell you, so we dance. We have some pictures of us drenched in sweat. Yeah. There it was, was not, just a there fun was nothing time. pretty about it. You know, you have persons who go through a lot of, um, you know, the aesthetic. This need to be perfect and. Yeah, no. We've never. Our we've personality never is just not like that at all. So. The only thing that we wanted to work well was that people came, that they, that they were there to, to be there with us and share in, in a moment that was special to us and, and relax and enjoy yourself, kick off your shoes and just, just be. Yeah. Yeah. I think before we, we went on the South Africa trip knowing that this was it because that South Africa trip was actually the last time that he lived in the US. When we finished that trip, he came home. So in 2008, he moved home as the ending part of our South Africa trip. So that was that was the beginning of our Jamaica We're Reality. Together yeah. journey. Yeah, and, and the, the whole marriage thing um, wasn't in our mind at that time. We were enjoying each other's company. Which I think is very important yeah. um, for other people to understand that. Don't think about marriage, right? Enjoy your company first. Marriage will come naturally if it is to come. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, we were enjoying ourselves and enjoying just each other, and we wrote about it. We wrote yeah. all kinds of. Um, That's what the conversations, yeah. the long conversations, were about. Though we wrote a lot. Yeah, um, we wrote a lot. We about journaled, things that we did we together. It. And when we, when you came home, I mean, we really just spent time still knowing each other, and that has been that's been the, the foundation. That's the foundation. That's the glue. So no matter the highs and the lows that we have gone through, the glue remains that we have a foundation. I I never expected that I would be. The absolute antithesis to social norms and rules, right? Um, I clean, I wash, I do all these things. That's not true. Well, she know, she know in that, right? She'll help and she'll do it when it needs to be done. But I like doing those things. So I never thought of me the, the term I, that I use sometimes is house husband, right? I never thought that that was going to be the reality. But when, when we realized that that was a reality, it, was, it wasn't even a thing like, aha. It was more like, oh, hey, you know, we've been doing this for some years now, and it works. So I never thought, and I never thought that she would be a person that doesn't, doesn't, is not into cooking and cleaning and ironing. I love iron. So it was a perfect little thing. Um, for me, I think as we grew together, um, what I didn't know before, which I started to learn about Charles is, you know, we use the term respect and support. 
um, sometimes very loosely. And I thought that I supported and I thought that I respected him. But my definition and understanding of what it meant to respect and support my husband was something that I realized I had no idea what that meant. And so as we went through some really rocky journey during the, during the marriage, my eyes started to open and all the scales start to fall off and I'm realizing that, okay, it's not your definition of respect and, and support. You ha I have to listen to him and start hearing what is respect and what is support to him. I need to start hearing him. And so I didn't realize that, you know, I'm doing it would do so much and think that we're supporting and thinking that we're respecting, but it's not from my perspective. It's the person who needs it. What does it mean to them? Mm -hmm. And that's what I have learned and continue to learn about Charles throughout our marriage. God. God alone. God alone. God alone. Because exactly. um, one example, we were we were at our end. Um, it's not last year, it's the year before last. Year before. The year before last. And God just said no. And um, it's two times, uh, two distinct times when God just stepped in. One, he stepped in with our son. Mm -hmm. um, not having our son, but he sent our son to deliver his message. So we were at it. We were at loggerheads and we were at it in the kitchen. Yeah. And arguing and, yeah. you know, just like, yo, I ate this. And our son came in. He was maybe about three or four at the time. Something like that. Yeah. And he just went between the two of us and he says, my God is so big, so, so strong, strong and so mighty. And There's he's not staring at the two at of the us. Two of us. And we could do nothing else but just start crying. Yeah. Because where him get that yeah. from? How and did he know that And that's all he had in? to say. That's he it. just said that and he... And he walked away. Finished his little song and walked off. That, that brought us to a reality. There was a lady <clears throat> um, who died. It was all over the radio. Um, and the husband of the lady had said that the reason they lasted 80 something years together was because they made their vows to God and not to each other and that thing struck me so after CJ did his song that thing come shooting back in my head like a freight train and I said to her you know I heard something recently that this is the perfect time to implement that. Because she wrote her vows. I said my vows. I didn't have them written. It was straight out of his, his mouth through my thing. And um, I said, when I made vows at our wedding, that was really a vow to God. In and right now I'm breaking those vows. So if you are willing, let's do this again and she agreed and we moved forward it wasn't like night and day yeah. See, and it was still rocky but <clears throat> i have a desire to be the one to get her dentures in the morning before we go out and sit on the balcony and rock and talk about the good old days right i, I have that desire to just be be that be at that point because um, two things, my parents didn't last, right? Um, my first marriage didn't last. And when I think about it, the only marriage I can think of that has lasted is my uncle body and auntie sister, right? They've been through it all over. And they're an inspiration to me. Auntie Sissy is an absolute ins inspiration to me. And I want to emulate that in our unity, right? Because I want my boys to understand what it takes to be a real man. And it have nothing to do with your muscles. It have nothing to do with your career. 
it has everything to do with the way in which you set the standard in your household. And that standard means through thick and thin, rain or shine, I'm standing up with you. Um, similarly to, to Charles, you know, one of the things that keeps me pursuing us is again our vows um, and also I always say to him that you know I feel like God has just attached it to my heart he really has attached attached it to my heart so it doesn't matter how rough things have become and and I feel like okay God this is this is it I feel like I can't breathe but yet, in that next moment, he's still in my heart. He's always in my heart, always in my heart. And um, and my parents, unlike his parents and you know his other elders, my parents are still alive, and they're still together, telling each other the same stories over and over, and forget that they said it to to, to each other yesterday, you know. Um, and forget the same stories and I, and I want to have I want to have that as well they've gone through some really rough times together um, but they, they keep on they keep on coming back and I want to keep coming back with us <clears throat> I am a person I would tell you that the institution of marriage is an amazing institution that I think that everyone who is mentally ready should undertake. The one word that is always, um, you know, marriage, commitment. Commitment is always there. But a lot of people believe that it is commitment to each other and you know you're not going to cheat on the person and all these things and yes that is should that should be a part of your whole game plan but you need to be committed to the marriage to what it means to remain married and not just connected on paper but connected building each other because marriage is about construction right you build a foundation together and you continuously build your home through each other, right? And so as long as you are committed to the long-term picture, try marriage. Mm -hmm. But if you are, you know, you know, if they can, you know, if the red flags are there, do not ignore them. Don't marry over circumstance. It works for some people. But see, it didn't work for me when I first did it. And um, it's working now. I didn't work matter of a circumstance. This time I actually walked into the thing, took my time, looked at the full thing and realized, okay, this is a smart decision to make. For us, we think about leaving each other a whole heap of times. Because sometimes you're not, going to, you're not going to like the person. Yeah. But do you love me? Are you, know? you committed? Are you committed to what we what we said we would be committed to? So all of them time the women are like her and she not like me. Are we committed to what we said we we're going to be? Right? And um, if as young people getting into marriage, you have to think about these things. Will you be able to commit to that reality? And as people who are, and can we've we've talked to people who are who are married and going through problems and stuff like that and they've come and they've talked to us and like Judith said, I mean I'm not a filter so I'm just, I just give it to the way I know it and the way that I believe is real and it, co it goes down to commitment mm -hmm. what are you committed it's just like chasing a career now. Yes. If, you are, if you are determined that you're going to be the best whatever it is you know so the universe will bend and make it, make it happen same thing with marriage yes same thing with marriage. If you are committed that this thing is going to be 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 years and you work towards that university, the universe will bend to your desire. Well, just as how you pursue in knowing your why in life, you know, you want to know what is my purpose. Um, 
make a conscious decision when you do decide that you want to get married why do you want to get married you know the the why needs to be very honest and not just with yourself but it needs to be honest to that person who you have your eyes set on and the why might be ugly and it might be pretty but it has to be very honest in saying in expressing the why and, and addressing the why and if the why is not pretty right now if it's not the best thing right now go work by yourself both of you go on and do some reconstruction um i remember when when charles and i um announced that we we're getting married a friend of mine said to me boy you know if he completes you and if he makes you happy and all of that thing then and I'm really happy for you. And I wrote back to her and said, he doesn't complete me. I'm complete. I'm going into the marriage with him, a whole person. So no, he's not completing me. And um, I didn't truly understand what I was saying then because there was still a whole lot more that needed to be worked out for me. And if I had known that before, and counseling doesn't fix that. Counseling can unearth honest counseling can on earth sum up the truth about you and your partner and I, and I and I say if it unearths the truth about what needs to some things some some gaps that are there some ugly stuff I'll work on them please and don't carry that to the partner you know be the, your partner deserves the best of you at all times don't carry it there don't so just be very very honest with who you are and why, why him, why her. Thank you so much, Charles and Judith. Here's the many more years of happiness and wedded bliss. On the next episode of Forever I Do. Yes, I'm a humble person and I work with people. You understand? I don't know what his pocket was like or anything. <laughs> so he was just going to grab a bite. And that bite was patty, orange juice. And a slice and of cake. And a slice of because cake. Because cake is my thing. <laughs> I love cake. So, you know, years after, you know, telling our children our story, my daughter said, but daddy, you're bright. You invite my mother out for the first time and carry on your patty. Patty <laughs> and Daddy. And daddy. And <laughs> that was how to father, daddy. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Makeup services provided by Nardine Beauty. Coordination and planning, Shakima Hines of Island Brides, Jamaica. Forever I Do is filmed on location at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, your wedding destination in Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs>